Hello, welcome to another episode of On the Floor with Wayne and Rob. I'm Wayne Highlander, Director of National Sales North America Adhesives. Oh my, we have, I'm Rob Johnson from Bona Training. Oh, well, but just... we have a new director in the house. Well, Notice, I... let's run through that one again, please. I... Say it, your new title. Oh, I don't want to say there. it again. Oh, I want to hear it again. Everybody wants to hear it. Director of sales. Uh, uh, at, at, okay. I got <laughs> I'm still getting used to it. Director of, of Adhesive Sales North America. Director. Yeah. Adhesive Sales North America. Yeah. yeah. So that's Canada and the United States. You know, if you look up NAM, it could also mean Mexico. Although I don't do anything in Mexico. I thought uh, Mexico was LAM. Uh, that's a good question. Actually, it can be construed to uh, mean uh, uh, NAM as well, I believe. I don't know. Who cares? You're just looking, at, you're just looking to take over more territory. <laughs> I don't do anything in Mexico anyhow. <laughs> That's it. And we've got a great team up in Canada that uh, with Jordan and, and, and Brad and Nico and Darren that take care of Canada. So, uh, yeah. So, anyhow. I'm up right. here right now. I'm in Toronto doing a school with uh, Jordan was in yesterday. Nico and Darren have been with me. So, doing a three-day up here. Going really good. Great. Please, please, for God's sakes, don't say anything about your trip to Canada, okay? As you said it, you're up there. Congrats. Let's just move on. Well, let me tell you about the trip up here, Wayne. Mm -hmm. No, no that's okay. No, you, you hate my traveling trips to Canada. You know, um, traveling I, stories. Yeah, I, I, I did get a, a promotion, and it's, a, it's an honor to lead the team. Uh, um, and, you know, uh, a lot of things come with age. <laughs> some, of them are, some of them good, some of them not so good. And um, yesterday, I was going through a drive through with Judy. Now, if you're in East Tennessee, there's a fast food chain that no one else in the world knows about called Pals. P is in Paul, A-L-S, Pals. And they're hideous looking stores. And when I first moved here, I could not understand why everybody was clamoring always. I mean, they're, they're full every day. It's a drive through fast food place. And then we moved here and then now um, we, we go to them twice a day probably uh, to get their iced tea, their unsweet iced tea. But yesterday we went through the line and Judy said, uh, two plain teas please and senior discount. I went, <laughs> wait, what? She goes, senior discount. I go, oh, I don't know about that, Jude. Why, 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 why did you have to say that? Why have you seen your discount? She goes, well, it's cheaper. I go, yeah, I know, but I'm like, how much could it possibly, I mean, I don't know about that. That's the first time I heard it out loud. You know what I mean? And um, um, she said, well, they raised the price like four times in the last year. So um, it's funny how money, your per perception of money changes as, in life as you get older. And I started thinking, it was like, it made that it was like 20 cents a drink difference okay but when i was a sophomore in high school and my older brother was a senior we were living in virginia uh going to hampton high school and um you know we didn't bring our we 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 brought our lunch okay we didn't buy our lunch at school we brought our lunch every day okay but did you bring your did you bring your lunch or just take other kids no we no no we brought our lunch are you sure? Yeah, positive. Okay. I never do that. But but for thirty five cents, you could buy a piece of cake. All right, this is a military school. Okay, and uh, or it was all military kids going there mostly. And um, so you know, thirty five cents. I didn't have thirty five cents on many occasions, right? So what I what I would do is um, I would I would sneak into my dad's room bedroom like late at night or super early in the morning. And I bring a baseball with me, okay? And I would low crawl to my dad's pants and rifle through there until I found some, you know, he didn't have a lot, uh, any money, but he had a lot of change. So, <laughs> so I would get 30, 35 cents out, okay, for, for, for the chocolate cake. Now, the, okay. base, the baseball was in case he, he woke up and saw me, like, what the hell are you doing? I'd say my ball, I, 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 my ball rolled into the room or whatever, and I was getting my ball, right? So that's how I, I would get um, 
you know, my, my piece of cake, my fat, fat ass would have cake that day. And then one day, and this, uh, honest to God, my brother, who's a senior, was in the lunch line ahead of me. <laughs> I mean, like 20 people ahead of me. And I just happened to notice him, you know. And then I just happened to notice him, and, and the cake was like cellophane to the, uh, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the plate, right? I noticed him pick up a piece of cake and then just put it in his coat pocket. Okay. <laughs> well, we could not get caught stealing. I mean, that was, you know, you, you would never, that, that, that would be a problem. So I had to let Steve in on my little, my little uh, foray every morning or, you know, late at night to, and I'd have to get out another 35 cents for him. Um, when you lived on a military base, so oftentimes the, the NCO clubs, the non-commissioned officer clubs, they would have um, they would have slot machines, one one arm bandits, you know, and that's why he had a lot of change in his pockets a lot of times. So I justified it like, all right, well either the one arm bandit's going to get the money or the two arm bandit's going to get the money, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, I look at now like Judy, why would you even like for for, for heaven's sakes to lower ourselves to say senior discount? um but your perspective changes over time yeah you know? but, right yeah instead of getting the discount uh, i'm shocked that you just didn't go in and uh and steal the tea no 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 not anymore you know i'm not going to steal tea it's too heavy you're not going to steal the tea no right. any, any kind of volume you it would be too heavy you, you didn't steal the tea no no um you have, you have no problem huh the, the what you Highlanders just stealing, stealing from your dad, stealing from. Oh, it's well, inter internally, it's fine. It's okay as long as you keep it in the clan. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Rob. Uh, Rob, I have got to read something, and um, and this is. Uh, uh, can I go ahead and do that? I, yeah. I think I was fascinated by this and, and I just really think it's super interesting. And I I was shocked by this news. Okay. Absolutely shocked by it. And this comes from Builder Magazine, and uh, the article is by uh, Ali Wolf, A L I W O L F, and it's entitled "Where Have the Workers Gone?" Okay, uh, so I'm just going to read you some of this that I thought was very interesting. Uh, right. So this is from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Okay, job openings and labor turnover uh, says that there are. 0.6 unemployed people per job opening, meaning there is roughly one person available for every two jobs posted. Isn't that amazing? Um, so I'm yeah. going to go go on here. The prime late the prime age labor force participation rate and an important cut of the data only looking at those from 25 to 54 years old has returned to its pre-pandemic level at 83.1%. The current rate is down from its peak, 84.6% in, in, in 1999. But listen, um, the change in the labor force is, is of particular interest to the construction industry. Uh, the job openings in construction industries averaged 402,000 per month. Okay, that was in 2022. This is up 45% from 2018 when there were 20, 277,000 openings per month. There are signs that there's a there's a better availability of workers since housing starts are, are down cyclically, but the lack of labor uh, is is a longstanding issue. So the obvious question is where have the workers gone? And this is where I think it's interesting. So where have the workers gone? Okay, they attribute it to four things. One of these is shocking to me. Okay, but I'm going to start with probably what we the, the one of the obvious is the aging workforce. Prior to the pandemic, 55 plus labor force participation rate, 55 years and older, was 40.3%. Uh, then it's dropped to 38.6% recently, okay? Um, as the pandemic unfolded, many baby boomers retired early or took an opportunity to take an extended break. Um, these, some of these will unretire, but that hasn't shown up in the data that yet, right? Uh, Wait, hold on a minute. Yeah. You said 55 and younger. Yeah. Right? 55 yep. and younger. Yeah. There's only 38% of guys 55 years old working? 
uh, okay, prior to the pandemic, the, the, the 55 plus year old labor force partition rate stood at 40.3%. Okay, three years later, it dropped down to 38.6%. Okay, because the baby boomers are retiring and going away and what have you, okay? So 62% of guys or people over 55 aren't working. Yeah. That, that, you got to be kidding me. Do you know anybody 55 or younger not working? Uh, no. Wow. That okay. seems like a crazy stat, man. So more systematic, though, is the fact that in 2030, all the baby boomers will be a retirement age, okay? This will lead to additional pressure on the labor force of the overall work age and the generations behind them, the Gen Xers, okay? So let's see. Uh, combined with that, with the uh, general failing fertility rates, the U.S. labor demographic pressure on both ends of the spectrum of the workforce is going to be a problem. So you've got younger kids having to, to carry the bulk of the work, and they're not having kids. What the hell are they doing? They're not working. They're not having kids. <laughs> I don't know what's Pretty going boring, on there. Huh? At least yeah. you think you're, if you're not working. You think you'd be. You, yeah. 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 So, well, so I lean's, I leans on this call, so we can't get, you know, mm -hmm. we can't but, go too crazy down that path. But, yeah, you would think if you're not working. You, but uh, uh, already more production. This is a generation that where you know people are saying, "Yeah, these guys don't work. They don't work. They don't work. Whatever." And couple that with more baby boomers are retiring. I mean, by the you know by 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 the year, everyone was retiring. It's going to put more pressure on them to work, and they're not having kids. So that that's one problem. Okay. So the second problem I thought was super interesting to me. Um. And that is, well, no, well, I'll go to the next one, is immigration, okay? Immigration has traditionally been a way to help augment the, the domestic labor force. However, it's surprising to me that the, the, uh, the most recent data from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security indicates the number of people seeking permanent residence status has fallen from 30, has fallen 37%. Okay, so that's down, all right? So the shortage of labor is, is viewed as severe enough that immigration looks like the most prominent short-term solution uh but it's uh, uh it, it not gonna be able to ramp up fast enough to take up the void but here's the third one that that really i think is shocking drug abuse drug abuse the opioid epidemic epidemic is is another contributor to the constrained labor pool they've been identified as a significant cause of death in the united states and in turn a decline in labor force participation is that shocking or what drug abuse yes the report found that cum cumulatively since 2000 since the year 2000 556,000 people have died of opioid overdoses not only is this a terrible human tragedy but it also adversely affects the number of people available to work wow what about the meth heads i mean can't they do something like they could be the new heroes you know what i mean i don't know it seems like they could do like production, like <laughs> delivering packages or some assembly line stuff. And they'll probably work for the dope. Uh, it's crazy. Um, what about the meth heads? Additionally, other my, people that are. My, my, oh, my. Yep. Additionally, <laughs> other people that are facing addiction but have not died are also unavailable to work. Uh, they have put this number as high as 900,000 additional workers and unable to work due to various addiction issues. That is that is shocking to me. So that is one of the top four reasons. Top four people reasons aren't working. Yeah, dying or on dope, on drugs. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Somehow we should be like like in in those addicted group as alcoholics and what have you. Somehow you just have to tailor them to what they would do best. You know what I mean? I think there's a. I think we could tap that pull a little more than we do. I think a lot of people aren't even asking for drug tests anymore. <laughs> That's, you know what? That's, that in itself is pretty shocking. All right. Number four. Um, this, whole, this whole road you're going down is pretty shocking. 
I hope this one makes the airwaves. Well, listen to number four, and this is interesting too, I thought, but it um, doesn't surprise me, but I didn't think the, the magnitude uh, would take this many workers away. Alternative to traditional work. According to this article, lastly, with the rise of TikTok and older platforms such as Instagram and YouTube, there has been a segment of the workforce that is making money online. I think, I think there's a lot of pipe dream here. You know what I mean? I really do. I think this, this inspires a lot of creativity and stuff like that. But one out of how many are going to make it in this in this group? Uh, based on the available data, there appears to be a small portion. Thank you of the potential workforce that may have dropped out to try to earn income on various social media sites. I can't imagine being, let's say you're a father, right? You worked your, your way up into business. Say, you, I don't know, maybe you're a director of sales or something. I don't know, some kind of very extremely prestigious position. And your kid has been like languishing in the basement till he's like 28 years old, um, playing video games. And all of a sudden he's a TikTok star and he's making more money than you. Could you imagine how how angry you would be as a as a dad who, who worked thirty years to get to where you were? And his you know, kids. The just... only thing I wonder about these these influencers, right? Isn't that what you call them? Influencers, mm-hmm. TikTok influencers. One, I don't figure out how they get paid, but yeah, I, I know people are making money off of it. Yeah, but what's the sustainability of that? You know, how many years? Yeah. Like well, let's say let's say you're you know let's say you're Kim Kardashian. Well, Kim Kardashian getting a little older now, you know, or mm-hmm. still people still going to be following her for or whatever, you know. I don't they wanna, don't. They, they don't, don't need. I to. know HR listens to this, so I don't want to get going crazy down that rabbit hole. But you're really afraid of HR these days, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole. That's a whole you, wanna, you want to explain that? Um, <laughs> no, no well, the, the not, Card- not at all. No. The, Car- the Kardashians got so much money now, they don't care. They got enough money for five generations of Kardashians. Well, all right. I, I guess that was a bad example, but let's say a TikToker or whatever, influencer. You know, how long can you do that? Exactly. Money at it. Okay, so to your earlier point, according to the small business blog, there are 20,000 to 40,000 influencers on Instagram with more than 1 million followers and 300,000 to 200, excuse me, and 300,000 to 2 million that have more than 100,000 followers. It is unclear how many of these influencers are based in the United States and how many of them would solely rely on social media channels for their income. Because they're, you, they're also doing like Uber driving and uh, delivering uh, uber eats and whatever that that type of stuff so these are jobs that typically wouldn't be you know i mean they weren't money making jobs in the past so they're all taking money away they uh, together all their these factors contribute to the problems with the united states labor force a big part of this aging of one of the largest seg- a big part of this is the aging of one of the largest segments the baby boomers boomers as more baby boomers retire further pressure will be put on the younger segments to increase workforce participation and economic output In addition to the general strain on the workforce and economy, the labor shortage is strongly affecting the construction industry, with an estimated shortage of over 500,000 workers, resolving the United States labor supply issue is of the utmost importance to help keep building costs down and produce homes quickly and age through a, at a quick enough pace to keep up with demand. Well, it's something that every it gets brought up at every single school, every single school. You know, we're doing some discussions and, you know, talking during lunch and everything. Every single guy says the same thing. Anybody who's looking for guys, they can't find them. Matter of fact, at this school up here, um, new kid, uh, new to the business. He's probably his early 20s, I think. Really good kid. Mm -hmm. And uh, just people are shocked that he had never run a big machine, never did this, never did we had him pulling a T bar and everything today, and uh, three guys, three guys were saying, "So, are you going to go out on your own, or uh, you looking for a job?" Three guys that are yeah. at this school are looking to hire this kid. Yeah, I mean, they're looking to hire the. I mean, they saw this kid and they're like, "Oh my God, this is this is exactly what I need." You know? Wow. Yeah. Somebody who's coachable, good kid. 
Can you imagine how angry the, 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 the boomers are going to be in another 10 years when the, the, the kids are, are laying around not doing anything and they're going, hey, man, you need, you know, you need to get out and work. And I, I can see the boomer going, hey, man, I'm just playing video games, man. Relax. Um, Is that you in 10 years? Is that how you're going to talk? Ah, who knows? Who knows? Uh, I'll take one day at a time. So it smells like opportunity to me. That's what I always say, it man. It smells you're... like opportunity with all these kids who are, aren't getting into the trades and everything. Wow. It, the time couldn't be better because, you know, by the time you and I and guys our age are out of the game, think about it. There's going to be half the guys. There's never you... been a better time to crush it in this trade. Yeah. Never been a better time. Yes, get as much education. Your own price. Get as much education as you can right now. Learn to trade up as much as you can. Network as much as you can, and and man, you could light it up. I'm going to tell you about a, a young guy I met uh, last week. Uh, I hope I pronounce his name properly. Rafael Ferreria, uh, F E R R E I R A, high end flooring services uh, with Carolina Flo uh, Pro Flooring. Uh, man, you know, the guys also, you know, it's interesting the guys you meet in this trade, you know, again, he was a Carolina pro flooring. It's interesting the guys you meet in this trade. It's a young guy, hard for me to tell people's ages anymore, you know, but he's in super good shape. And we got to talking at lunchtime, you know, he was installing a floor. He's a, uh, he's a professional, uh, downhill bicycle racer. You ever see those guys? Those guys are crazy, man. Jumping off all those cliffs and over those hills and I mean, on the, on the bikes. Guys in super good shape, man. So they're they're out there, man. There's some studs out there, and there's opportunity everywhere, more than ever before. So I think it says that's it, you know stay away from some of you know the things that uh, that can take you out of the game, and um, and there's a great opportunity. The last class I had in Monroe, he he came to that class. Oh no, kidding. Yeah, yeah. So oh, I know he's darn. a great oh, guy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, great interesting. Kid. Yep. And all over social media, all you know, he's doing it right. He's doing it right. And he's one of those guys. I mean, the, man, that younger generation, once, you know, once we start clocking out, yeah. there's a lot of guys our age in the business. We all, you know, we know yep. we see tons of them. Once they start clocking out, there's going to be a hell of a, there's going to be a hell of a shortage. Yeah. Not only is there a worker shortage <laughs> now, but there's, it's going to get worse. Oh, Yeah. So, um, but I still, okay. I'm shocked at that one number 55 and younger, only 38% of, of those people are working. Yeah. That's wild. Well, construction industry too does, you know, that's, um, you know, it's, it's like, say we need a man in worse than worse than any, any industry right now. I know that you have said this before. I can't think of it. I wish I could remember. What, what the average age of a floor guy is. I've heard 56 years old was the average age and I've heard 52. So regardless, somewhere in there, we know that it's, it's up there. That just sounds crazy to say that out loud, doesn't it? Yeah. That's yeah. old. Yeah. The average age, that's mm -hmm. pretty freaking old. Well, depends on how you look at it now. Now it looks pretty young to me. The, when I was looking at uh, this guy work and um, the downhill racing and stuff that, that, that he used to do. And I was thinking that, you know, when you're a kid, you know, like I used to watch a lot of cowboy movies when I was a kid and uh, to prove yourself as a, as a man, like the, you know, like, uh, you, you know, like um, in a lot of the cowboy movies, like the Indians would go and they would like have to bring back a feather from an Eagle. You know what I mean? Hmm. To, to like, you know, prove their manhood, like whatever, or, or they, they would have to, um, like climb up the highest peak in the mountain by themselves, or they'd have to camp out in the woods for a week and come back. And that means that is, a, you know, the, the, their transition into manhood. We lived where we, you could see the Pikes Peak mountain right from our house in Colorado when we lived there. And this influence, I just used to think, well, what can I do? You know what I mean? And, you know, we also lived about a quarter mile from a 7-Eleven. So, I used to look at that mountain and think, I wonder, you know, as a kid, you know what I mean? Like, how far would it be there if you walked there? And could I really stay over there overnight or whatever? And, 
or then I decided that I could, or I could just stay away from seven. I used to go to seven 11, get a hostess, uh, uh, those, uh, berry. I, I was going to say, pies. instead of climbing the mountain, you probably yeah. went and stole cake from seven 11. No, but I stayed away from them for a week. That was my, you know, transition into manhood. Uh, get stuff. I wouldn't get my blueberry pies every week. <laughs> no hostess blueberry pies for a week. No. Yeah. That's it. Uh, I can it, do it. it. I'm a man. You got to tough it out. The time has come. Rob, you want to talk about... I'm going to give you a bell for that. A bell or... or, or a... a bell. And, you know, now that we rang the bell, uh, we received an email from a listener. I can't believe it. He didn't care for the bell. Yeah. He said the bell was too loud in his earplugs or earmuffs or whatever he's wearing. Mm-hmm. And, it ditched the bell. Uh, yeah, so he wants us to get rid of the bell. Mm. And, uh, okay, you know, you asked for it. If you want to get rid of the bell, we have to have some sort of sound effect. Yeah. Uh, How about this one? Or perhaps this one? I don't know, maybe this one. So we'll have to decide which one we go with. Okay, Rob, I just thought it would be interesting to talk about uh, the labor statistics. And uh, again, I, I think it's, uh, you know, it's on one hand, if you're an established business, you need employees, you know, not such great news uh, necessarily, because just, we still face the same labor challenges we've, we've had. But on the other hand, if you're a young person coming up or you have young kids, nephews, nieces, your family members that are looking to, to, to get into a great trade, uh man uh the, the sky's the limit it really is can you imagine when we started we we'll didn't have them in the floor people yeah we didn't have training like this when we started we didn't have uh all the opportunities for training and, and and everything now so that's a great opportunity for you for young people today to learn a great trade okay rob i appreciate your your limited input and this has been another episode of on the floor with wayne and rob Please stay tuned for another episode.